Welcome back to the Crawl Space Crypt. I am Tim here today with Lance and Jen. What's up, you two? Wow, I am just so thrilled to be on the Crawl Space Crypt. It's not often that I get invited into the crypt. Lance, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good, good intro. Thank you. I'm doing I'm I'm feeling uh I'm feeling pretty spicy after coming off of our Hidden Opinions recording, so uh, feel free to swing over there, subscribers, to check out the missing subservice, um, because we talked about some pretty dark and frustrating cases, um, ones that we've recently aired. But thank you, Jen. I hope you're doing well. Tim, I hope you're doing exceptional. I hope everyone thank else you. is doing exceptional. Yeah. I'm still feeling a bit spicy. All right. Well, that's we we can work with that. And uh, so thank you for uh, for listening to this. This is our Crawl Space Crypt bonus show that airs on our subscription service called Crawl Space Premium. And you can subscribe to that at crawlspace.supportingcast.fm. And Lance, you mentioned the missing premium service. We do Hidden Opinions, which is our weekly bonus show over there. And you can get that at missing.supportingcast.fm. Dot fm and you get ad free episodes as well as these weekly bonus shows and this one right here is coming to the public feed as a little bit of a promotion we want to say hey why don't you subscribe to crawlspace premium it's five bucks a month i think there's a ten dollar option as well but it's a lot of fun you get you get your favorite crawlspace content ad free sometimes a day early and you get this bonus show which is real a real peek behind the curtain if you will you even get your uh, maybe your least favorite Crawl Space episode ad free. <laughs> That's a great point. You would get if that. If you wanted ad to go free. back and re listen to and hate listen to one of them, you could. <laughs> ad free. Ad free. That's that's <laughs> correct. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. I just <laughs> want to be clear about it. Oh man. What a week. Yeah. We're sitting here recording this on June 29th, 2022. It is a Wednesday. Tomorrow on Missing, we have an interview with Pulitzer Prize winner Maggie Freeling that, uh, that is airing over there. And that is a really fun conversation. A little bit unlike the kind of uh, heavier topics we've covered on Missing in the past couple weeks. Um, because we joke around with Maggie a lot about her having just won a Pulitzer Prize for journalism for the uh, the podcast Suave, Maggie and Julieta and Maria from Futuro, they uh, and Suave, Suave Gonzalez, they won this this uh, Pulitzer, and uh, it's it's just quite an impressive achievement. And since we're such good friends with Maggie, we cannot let this moment pass without making fun of her for like 10 minutes over it. Indeed. <laughs> and Suave Gonzalez has a podcast on our network, on the Crawl Space Network, called Death by Incarceration. Um, it's an excellent show. Um, if you haven't listened to it, hop on over. Hmm. Absolutely. And they Absolutely. just interviewed the, uh, the president's daughter over there on Death by Incarceration. That's an incredible... Incre just incredible that those people met with uh, the president's daughter and, um, you know, talk about these serious issues that they cover on death by incarceration. And these are some of the same issues that Maggie Freeland covers on her wrongful convictions show that she has sort of recently begun with um, with Jason Flom over there at wrongful convictions. And Maggie is still uh, working with the Obsessed Network and we're actually going on tour with Maggie and Patrick Hines of True Crime Obsessed this summer, this August. Yeah, I want to say real quick, uh, going back to the Suave conversation, that show, Death by Incarceration, and his career that he's achieved after getting released from prison for over 30 years uh, has been remarkable. And if for no other reason, if you, want, if you listen to Suave or Death by Incarceration, just if you don't like that content, just listen listen to how intelligent and articulate he is, and you'll be blown away by what someone can do when they put their minds to it after coming out of something so challenging and potentially life, not not life ending in the sense that he would die, but his his life as it is now couldn't didn't have to be the way it is. Um, he did a really great job building the the pieces back or putting the pieces back to, back in place when he got out of prison um so i just wanted to give a shout out like that because 
he's the type of person we mentioned Ashley Biden. He's the type of person that saw found out Ashley Biden was in in some sort of field uh, for rehabilitation. She was she was part of the process to fix the the incarceration epidemic. And he right. was really stopped at nothing to, to, to introduce himself. She came to one of their live shows, and then he was able to sit down. There was a guest host, uh, Spencer Daniels, who hosts Injustice, the Injustice podcast with Lisa Spees. And they did a great job speaking with uh, Ashley Biden. But again, I just wanted to have a quick sidebar there on just a few years ago, he's he's in solitary confinement. And, you know, flash forward to sitting down with the president's daughter discussing the process to make uh, the process for change so yeah 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 pretty pretty unbelievable story um and i really like how uh ashley is is kind of you know going back over some of what her father did joe biden did in like the 90s with these sentences for drug crimes that did not need to be as long as they were and yeah. that's not really why suave was uh incarcerated but um you know i just i just find that interesting that they're you know she's she's determined um to sort of work in that same field and you could say kind of undo some of the things that her dad did years ago. Yeah. It's pretty impressive that you can have the confidence to sit down and hold the president's daughter. Sorry, sit down with the president's daughter and hold him accountable for what he did and be, well, like you said, he wasn't incarcerated for like ridiculous drug charges, but that compounds the problem or that like adds to the problem that, uh, it doesn't matter what he was put in jail for or if he was guilty or not that th those were the uh, that was the foundation that that builds these institutions anyway so mm -hmm. he was part of joe biden was part of the problem and it was it, it is really cool to see that someone who got out of that can hold the <laughs> can speak to the president's daughter about that and hold yeah. her dad accountable for sure before we moved on, I wanted to, because I, I derailed the conversation by going back to Suave, and you had been talking about the True Crime Obsessed Tour. Uh, for those people who aren't aware, we're going to be in Orlando on August 3rd, Atlanta, August 8th, St. Paul, August 18th, then we're in Dallas on the 20th, and Houston on the 21st. So if you know anybody or if you're in any of those respective cities, uh, feel free to swing over to truecrimeobsessed.com and click on the CS Live tab and you'll see the link to buy your tickets there. And if you had bought tickets to St. Paul and Dallas, those two venues have changed. So um, they'll be sending out an email about that. Uh, probably already received the email by the time you're listening to this. Right. And West Palm Beach, yeah, that, that show is not happening anymore. So we've got five shows uh, in the in the month of August, Orlando, Atlanta, St. Paul, Dallas, Houston. Really want to see you there. This show is a lot of fun, and um, we're doing it with Maggie Freeling and Patrick. Well, prize winner Maggie Freeling. You'll, you'll <laughs> definitely be arrested if you don't say that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no Jillian Pensavale for this version of the show, and uh, she she's got some fear of flying, which is totally acceptable. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun anyway. Um, we will miss Jillian, but this, uh, this show will be a lot of fun. Next week on Missing, I want to, uh, I want to mention that um, we've got a two-parter with our friend Bill Thomas of the Mind Over Murder podcast that he does with his friend Kristen Dilly. And you can find out what they do at mindovermurderpodcast.com. But Bill joins us for a two-parter on Missing Part one airs on Monday. Part two will air on Thursday of next week, July 4th and July 7th. And Lance, part one, we get into a horrifying, terrifying situation. A grand mystery. The mystery of, Bill, of, of missing Bill Thomas. Where was he during a couple hours at CrimeCon 22? We unpack this. We actually spend like 15 minutes unpacking this. And we're not done. <laughs> no, no, we we should have gone on longer. And you're right. It was a uh, grand mystery, but it truly was the nightmare scenario for people in the true crime podcasting industry because it was living out the the reality. Art mocks life and vice versa. <laughs> and really, we all thought we were in that moment. We all thought we were in that moment where Bill Thomas was going to be the subject of a multi-part docuseries. And Rebecca Sebastian 
bless her heart for really, really championing, championing. I got to stop trying to say that word because I just can't <laughs> pronounce it. She really spearheaded the uh, the search for Bill Thomas. Um, <laughs> she did. <laughs> yeah, the search for Bill Thomas. And yeah, yeah, we did go on and on about it, but really it deserves more and we will have a follow up. Yeah, we, we are having a uh, sort of a live unpacking of this um, next Friday, July 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We are going to get deeper into this um, live with live. Bill Thomas and Rebecca Sebastian. So we just want to mention it here. Make sure to check out those episodes. Make sure to giggle at the missing Bill Thomas uh, section in part one. Um, we'll release a social media video today. Actually, I think it's uh, it's out on TikTok and Instagram already. I think um, it's just a, just a segment of what uh, is in that missing Bill Thomas, um, I guess, uh, section of of that longer interview. It's funny. I hope people find it as funny as we found it. Because I, I couldn't stop laughing when we were breaking it down. And the more, and like, if, if Bill got a little bit angry, that was even funnier. <laughs> and he did get a little angry. He got, and, yeah, uh, it's like an yeah. amused annoyance to him. Yeah. It's, it's an amusing annoyance to him. And it's funny because it's almost like when you intentionally make your parents mad <laughs> for your own amusement, <laughs> because Bill is kind of like our, it's kind of like our podcast dad. Well, we call and, him Papa Bill. We do call him Papa Bill, and we we know that this whole missing Bill Thomas thing is like kind of gets under his skin a little bit. But it's so <laughs> funny to watch him defend the actions, his actions that night, and why it was ridiculous that he was missing. <laughs> yes, Rebecca Sebastian um, sort of led that charge. Uh, Bill's co-host Kristen Dilly was very much involved at that moment. Doctor Shiloh from LA Not So Confidential was was there at that moment, as well as me and Lance, all trying to figure out where Bill Thomas was. And it turns out he was exactly where he was supposed to be. Um, no, I don't want to give away the whole ending yet, but uh, but he's not currently missing. Um, this one's got a happy ending. <laughs> like how Jen, Jen's like, yeah, I wasn't there. <laughs> I are we still recording? Yeah. <laughs> we sure are. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna really make this a thing. So uh, get ready. <laughs> I don't know why we've latched onto it. I think because it is hilarious and it's like a good deviation from serious topics, which we always uh, welcome. So yeah, we are gonna make it a thing. If we haven't made it a thing already, it'll be a thing soon. It was definitely funny to us. Um, again, I hope I hope other people find it funny. I do think Rebecca and Bill will p both probably get a little bit annoyed during that live show next Friday on July 8th. But I also feel like that's kind of our role, Lance, is to instigate this and just make them like angry. Not as like angry, but like like comically annoyed at each other and the situation that that's what I want to get to. I want to get yeah. to that point where we're all laughing kind of uncomfortably. <laughs> Stoking the fire a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's all. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors. And now we're back to the program. So last week I was, uh, I actually took a week off, um, which was, uh, which was amazing um, to, to, I guess, not think about uh, our normal work as much as I could for that week. And trust me, it was challenging. Um, there were there were a few days there and I, I responded to one email and then Lance got mad at me and told me not to stop, told me to stop responding to emails. I <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I literally couldn't help myself. Um, <laughs> it was an easy response. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't like a detailed yeah. response. It, I it was very understandable that you'd see that and be like, "Oh, I can write a quick like, yeah, you know, bam bam type email and get it off the off the plate." So it was understandable. Yeah. It's not like you wrote like a three paragraph dissertation on a disappearance of someone. <laughs> That's right. I'll save that for next week. Um, but uh, while on vacation, I, uh, I I hung out at Cape Cod with the family. And it's a beautiful area of, uh, you know, of the country. And it's, it's so quiet and peaceful down there, especially at night. You can hear a pin drop. You can go for a walk in one of those neighborhoods near the water, and you can hear a pin drop. It's, like, unbelievable. 
I love that sound, <laughs> essentially the sound of silence or, or trees or the wind blowing, uh, maybe some birds, crickets, just love it. But I was looking to the skies uh, during some of these evenings, just Here we because go. The, the, stars, <laughs> the stars are out, the sky is black, and uh, you know, you're near the water, there's no city lights, you can see further. And uh, I, I don't know, guys, I saw some, some things that I would describe as UAPs or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. And I'm not saying they're little green men. I'm just saying I don't know what they were. They were in the sky. They, were, they look like moving stars, um, not shooting stars, um, because those fall and move much, much faster than what I'm saying. Um, these almost moved very slowly across the sky, possibly like a satellite um, or the ISS, if you are to ever see that with your, uh, with your eye at night. Did it have, like... Did it move in a smooth line, like elliptically across the sky, or did it change direction? They were moving in straight lines. Um, I will say I saw three, three or four, four actually, four of these UAPs in three separate sightings. Um, three out of four times I went out late at night and looked up at the sky. for, And really, I was only out there for a few minutes. And only one time did I not see something. But I'm just looking up there, my head straight up, and you kind of just see these little stars. And it's so far up there that, like, it, I don't think it could be an airplane because, A, there's no flashing lights, which you usually see with airplanes. But it appears like it's so far above where airplanes would be. That's that's my story. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I know UAPs are, are all over the news lately. The government is investigating them. There's been some sightings in San Diego this week. I think the uh, it, it's it's all I'm saying is it's possible that the aliens are here. Well, then why don't they start fucking helping? <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, what are they waiting for? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they are helping. We don't know how yet. We have monkey pox now. Help us. <laughs> I would really love it if they would like beam up the entire Supreme Court. That would be great. <laughs> that would be amazing. Thank you. That would I'm going to start a movement. Beam up SCOTUS. Oh, what if what if I they expand? We, we, they, they help expand the Supreme Court with extraterrestrials. They, they pop a couple of extraterrestrials, no party affiliation, on the bench, and we see how that works. I think we're at the point now where we need an impartial judge. Mm. yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. no yeah, party exactly. affiliation yeah. yeah just make logical decisions i feel like we really need to become an l ron hubbard novel a <laughs> couple questions on this sighting this alleged yeah. sighting these alleged mm -hmm. sightings um witnesses to your sighting is one and yep. lost time did you experience any lost time uh bright lights sudden bl bright lights uh Anything of that nature, of that ilk? Well, don't be silly. Did two FBI agents come over the dune, one <laughs> potentially with reddish hair and the other a bit taller, brunette. Wait, are you describing Bill Thomas and Rebecca Sebastian? Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was describing Lucy Lawless and <laughs> Kevin Sorbo. I would or, never uh, describe Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> Mulder and Scully. You describe him, but it wouldn't be that. <laughs> No, I mean, honestly, I, I can't say what I saw was extraterrestrial in nature, although I have my suspicions. You know, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I appreciate that they're calling it UAPs now. And the I'll government duck in is the actually question here. Ducking the two that. questions I just Oh, presented. I'll answer them. I'll answer directly. <laughs> but I just want to say I appreciate that they're calling it unidentified aerial phenomena because that's a much better descriptor, I think, of, you know, unidentified flying object. While maybe both were true and whatever it is I saw, like, I think UFO just kind of has the little green men, um, you know, stigma to it, where yeah. I don't think UAP really has that yet. So, okay, so no, no last time. Um, I was only out there for really a few minutes each time. No bright lights. Um, and there were witnesses one of the times I was out there because I, my, my wife and my sister were there with us. And I told them what I saw the night before. I was like, I'm telling you, we go out there and look tonight. You come out there with me. It'll be like 11 o'clock or whatever before we go to bed. Just promise me. We all go out there. We look, we, we angle our heads up to the sky and look for just like a few minutes. Look at the stars. 
you see something moving, great. If, if not, you're going to have a great time no matter what. But they didn't see what I saw. And at that moment that they were out there with me, I saw two. Two of these things moving in the sky, separate, separate sides of the sky, kind of moving, moving very slowly, like an airplane would, um, but just, again, like so high up there. I think it, was, it would be too high for an airplane and no bright light, uh, no flashing lights that I could see at least. Uh, my wife and sister did not see these. They they were they they didn't think I was crazy or or anything like that. And I was not on drugs or or drunk or anything like that. Um, but they they both said they they couldn't see it. In fairness, very hard to point out. It's like it's like right there, right there. Look look right there. And they're like I don't I don't know. And they kind of just both lost patience after a couple minutes. But. I know what I saw. So here's the scenario. It's either just me seeing shit and I'm just I'm just going crazy slowly apparently or I you know I I have very good vision which is confirmed by my eye doctor. That is confirmed. You have 2040. <laughs> I, I do have better than famously apparently great vision. Famously better than uh, perfect vision. And uh, so they did not, uh, but they did not see this. So I don't know. I don't know exactly why they did not see it. If they just didn't have the dedication, maybe their their minds weren't ready to see this, or maybe maybe I was just seeing something that no one else could see, which you know I, I suppose would make me, uh, or, or possibly could make me crazy. Yeah. Your wife and your sister are part of the conspiracy for oh my god non disclosure. Jen, I didn't even think about that at first, mm-hmm. but now I'm I'm starting to follow that path. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is invasion of the body snatchers territory. <laughs> I'm planting the seed. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Cut to next crypt, and Tim's broadcasting from his van in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's well. It, it reminds me when you said um, that you could see it, maybe you needed to be in the right mindset. Maybe, you know, maybe they weren't in the, the right mind frame to see these things. And it reminded me instantly of Christo uh, Rapolo, who is part of the subject of the documentary, The Curse of the Man Who Sees UFOs, who, by the way, we've had a couple of email correspondences with. And we, ty- we, we do have fringe type characters on the show from time to time. And we have a lot of fun with those conversations. But... All of the email correspondences with him fell into a very weird, not dangerous, and he's a great guy. He's a great human being, but I'm not ready to personally have the conversation with him yet because he's really on a level that this show's not on. <laughs> he, so the point is, is what Tim was saying, like he, he can see these things. He believes he can see them in the daylight. He can signal to them and when you see like video footage of what he sees, it's very similar to what you were talking about, Tim. So maybe you're, maybe we are getting to that point where we can have him on and uh, discuss this because he can see those things exactly what you just described in the daylight. And I don't know if, if it's a satellite, you typically see it like pulsate, right? I don't know. I don't think so. I was doing some research on this and for, for the human eye to be able to see a satellite from the ground, it would have to actually be reflected by the sun. Like it would have to be in the sunlight. So that's, that's at least what I, what I read there, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) If if expressions could talk. (laughs) Forgot we were an audio (laughs) only. Um, (laughs) Uh, I, I believe satellites can be seen at night too, um, and they do usually have that kind of straight line across the sky. Mm-hmm. I think often they have, like you can see very faintly, a blinking red light or potentially a yellow light, but not all, all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think um, I think most, like the direction of travel, like they're orbiting, right? So that would be a straight line across the sky Mm -hmm. i think with uh other sightings of uaps and stuff like what makes it so interesting is that they change direction or like go at a 90 degree angle or something but according to your story it was it was a straight line right okay so yes at the cape this weekend june 2022 that was what i saw straight lines um i have seen something different only once before and this time I was in the desert, uh, in in uh, California, the palm, the palm desert near Joshua Tree, and uh, you know, 
potentially a little uh, inebriated on some substances. I, I cannot confirm nor deny, but I do. There was a witness to it at that point as well. And what we witnessed was uh, three of these little, I guess, slow moving stars or UAPs moving together across the sky slowly that same pace. And then they broke off and went separate separate directions. So I've only seen that once, I have to say, but, uh, and again, that, you know, there's tons of mil- military bases out there in, in the desert near there. I have no idea what, what I actually saw, but I'm just describing it to you. I feel like it's time to, uh, open up this conversation and I, I want the audience to do this too. If you live in an area where you can see stars, it's a clear night and you know, maybe you're not by the city, go out there five, 10 minutes, Lay on the lay on your on your lawn, or just just sit on a chair, cock your head up to the sky, and give it five or ten minutes. And if you see anything moving way high up there that's not flashing, please let us know. I want to know. I'm not crazy about this. <laughs> I agree, and I think um, if you're doing that, two things: you should uh, download the Skyview Light app. It's a yes. wonderful app. If you see something, it'll tell you where the ISS is. So if you see something like that, it'll identify the ISS uh, and it's free. So that's a really great app and really fun, too. If you're out there at night and you're even in the day, it'll tell you where the uh, constellations are and planets. Really good app. Uh, not sponsoring the show. They should. But I just yeah, they should give a good plug there. Um, yeah. Also, if you are laying on your lawn, uh, be sure to detick when you come inside. Mm, yes. Great call, especially in the Northeast. Lots of uh, ticks. Hashtag ticks are aliens. <laughs> if that's how if that's how the aliens arrived, then they have really uh, gone above and beyond for their destruction of humans. Have Have you both um, listened to the podcast called Fringe Network, uh, Alien State? Yet? Ooh, no, I no, Jen. I feel like this one's good. right up your alley. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I've been I've been listening to this one, <clears throat> and. Uh, some of them are available only for subscription at this point, but they're coming out um, all for free and uh, highly recommend it. It's good journalism. Um, it's interesting. It really gets into like this current age of UAPs, you could say, that we're in and how the, the U.S. government is actually interested in it officially for the first time. So I'm kind of uh, at a point where I'm ready to talk about it a little bit more. And uh, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. I think it's a fascinating topic. It's almost surreal that this uh, moment in time has kind of tapped us on the back while we were looking in a different direction, I feel like. But uh, but here we are. <laughs> Again, I just want to put the call out to the aliens if they are here to, and they are here to help. Maybe they could um, maybe they could pick up the pace a little bit on that. Well, haven't you heard stories of, of uh, you know, UAPs uh, disarming nuclear uh, weaponry? Haven't you had heard those stories that they, this is in the past? They've done this apparently. Definitely. Well, I think uh, one of the whole like platforms that that guy, Dr. Stephen Greer of the Disclosure Project, um, he says that the that the uh, extraterrestrials are here to help. Um, that they are kind of enlightened, extra dimensional beings, and they became interested in planet Earth after we became nuclear capable. Mm-hmm. Since we pose a threat to uh, planets outside of our own. Right. <laughs> I'd love to hear what people think about this. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. And a thank you to our sponsors. Back to the program. Now, Jen, you wanted to talk about a recent documentary that, uh, that is out there. Tell us a little bit about this documentary. Yeah, I think it's an easy transition from extraterrestrials to cults. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Do do you want do you want me to provide a transitional sentence for you? I just did. Maybe it. the aliens are <laughs> cult leaders. Oh, uh, actually. <laughs> but go on. Very, very interested. You you brought this to our attention this morning, so. Um, I, it's not a blind side, but it was a it was a welcome uh, opportunity to discuss something that I personally am not aware of. You said, "Can we talk about this?" And we were like, "Yeah, just tell us what it is." <laughs> um, which I don't know how you've missed this because it's like definitely part of the zeitgeist. But we're talking about the cult 
of Teal Swan. She is a new agey kind of self-help guru. There's a new docuseries out on Hulu. It's a free form docuseries. It's called The Deep End. And it's a really amazing series. It's by um, the same individuals who produced The Vow covering the Nexium uh, group. Um, so that that same beauty of uh, cinematography and the same uh, treatment of the material is apparent in the deep end. And they they gained like amazing access to Teal Swan and her like inner circle of followers. But basically, Teal is this woman who gained notoriety uh, via her YouTube videos. She's um, if you if you watch a, a couple of these, I mean, go into it with with uh i don't know your your guard up i suppose because her videos are a bit hypnotic she talks in this kind of measured low tone where it's it's kind of hypnotic and meditative and she has these like backgrounds that are kind of swirling colors and stuff and there's definitely been documentation of of people you know all over the world um listening to these videos kind of in the background or even as they sleep and I'm not sure what happens like when you are just kind of like unconsciously inundated with her with her thoughts, <laughs> but it, it must um, trigger something hypnotic in people. I got to go back. Sorry to interrupt. I need to know what happened to make you say go into these videos with your guard up. Did you start to unintentionally fall into this sort of trance well she's a compelling person um i you hear her like attractiveness talked about a lot she's like a beautiful woman she's got this long dark hair like piercing green eyes she's not an ugly person um so it, like already it's like easy to watch because she is an attractive woman and that kind of draws you in and then coupled with her message and the tone of her voice and like the way they're produced is like very hypnotic. And then like, but the, but the scarier thing is her actual message. She's been called the suicide catalyst. There's a couple documented suicides that were followers of Teal Swan. And I got to say that's, that's like prevalent in, in the discussion on Teal Swan that she talks about suicide a lot. I mean, it's like mental health and like there is some grains of truth like ripped right from the DSM. Um, there are things that are like a uh, part of the script when you call the national suicide hotline that's like incorporated into her into her talks on suicide and mental health. But then she like steers it into this like new agey spiritualist direction where it, she claims to have like omniscient knowledge according to the Akashic texts. Have you guys heard of that Akashic record? Oh, well, no. I of course have, but <laughs> explain to the listeners who haven't what that is. <laughs> so the Akashic uh, texts are kind of this like occult concept of knowledge of every idea that's ever occurred in human thought. So she claims to have access. Didn't our friend Mitch Horowitz talk about that? Yeah, probably. I yeah. don't recall. Um, okay, uh, unpack that. I hate saying unpack. I feel like I'm overusing that, but explain <laughs> that. So, so by drawing on a concept like omniscient knowledge of all human thought is positioning Teal as this ultimate authority on anything, right? She already knows what you're thinking. She already knows what you have thought. She already knows what your ancestors have thought. <laughs> she knows what's what you're going to think. So it's uh, like any good cult leader. Um, she's claiming special knowledge and awareness of like this plane of reality and other planes of reality. Well, I, I'm a little, I guess, on guard immediately when I when I search this person. <laughs> her uh, her stage name, I guess, is Teal Swan. Teal like the color. T A E L or uh, T E A L. It's not a stage name. It's her. Well, her real name is Mary Teal Bosworth. So her real name is Mary Bosworth. Let's just <laughs> Swan, be honest about it. 
Swan is a married name. Um, Teal is her middle name, I believe. Mm-hmm. So she's she knew exactly what she was doing when she chose that stage name. She was probably d- between that and the Boz. <laughs> <laughs> So Mary Bosworth. Okay, see, so I, my my initial point is that if she does this entire career thing as Mary Bosworth, it doesn't work as well as it does if her name's Teal Swan. Okay, that's my first. The name Teal Swan just puts me on a nice level, tranquil like mindset, right? Yeah. Teal definitely. Swan. Teal if Swan. I saw a Teal Swan, I'd be like, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. So, so she's part of this kind of like she was um, one of the first kind of new age spiritual leaders to like kind of adapt to social media and YouTube, gaining followers all over the world. Um, the, the, her organization functions on a couple levels. I mean, there's this like internet following where everybody who listens to the videos or follows her in that way and doesn't go to her retreats um, is not necessarily in a cult per se, but she does, the documentary, The Deep End, does make the point that her inner circle is very culty. So there's people that have, like, given up their lives um, for no payment and, like, go and run her social media or run cameras on her or do marketing for her. Um, She kind of started this this group. I mean, her followers are called the Teal Tribe. (laughs) Which is kind of lame. Like I again, I though. Like I, it sounds sounds tranquil. Sounds relaxing. I don't know. I'd pick a cooler name. <laughs> the Teal Tribe. Yeah, I guess it's got that alliteration. It kind of, it kind of works. Yeah. Her standpoint or viewpoint on suicide does seem a little interesting. She's kind of saying, you know, that uh, that it's okay. I guess, in a way, is that is that correct? Yeah, so like the the functional part of her message is that she's destigmatizing suicide. I think people who feel suicidal feel like they can't talk about it, they can't say it um, because people are scared. I mean, the people who who love them like don't want them to he- don't want to hear that they're contemplating suicide. But I I would venture to say like it's something everyone considers or thinks about at some time. Like there's there's a different like. A difference in levels like I mean everybody has suicidal ideation at various points but not everybody has a plan to commit suicide um, and obviously it's a thing that happens I think it's like a, one of the leading causes of death in this country is suicide so it's a huge problem that Teal Swan is kind of tapping into and she admittedly uses SEO work on her website and in her YouTube videos Like when somebody types into Google, I want to kill myself, her video pops up. Like she's purposefully targeting these like very vulnerable individuals. And so they're watching her, her videos. And I'd say like being a person who has suffered with like depression before in the past, like you're kind of in a fog when you're depressed And you need something that will like jar you out of that fog. And Teal's manner of speaking in this is like very kind of brusque. It's very blunt. She's like, you need to choose life or you need to choose death. Like if you're going to kill yourself, kill yourself, like do it kind of antagonizing the person. And that actually has efficacy in like therapeutic circles, but it's, it's the fact that she's blasting these messages out without any follow through with people who are receiving the message. So if she's like, choose life or choose death, a therapist would then have a follow-up session and like be able to walk with that person through the thought process. Right. But Teal's just like, has no responsibility for these people who are, who she's asking this question to. So that's like what most people are talking about with, with Teal Swan. I think there's something even more dangerous going on with Teal. And I'll tell you. <laughs> Do tell. After this commercial break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what do you think? So I haven't really heard this explicitly stated. I mean, the docuseries does go into this a bit, but they they um, kind of ride the, the suicide track a bit. Like, oh, a suicide cult has a lot of like kind of shocking connotations and stuff. But Teal Swan... Um, 
was the patient of this psychotherapist in the 90s uh, by the name of Barbara Snow. And she was instrumental in the satanic panic um, in the 90s. So she, her patients, she'd basically uncovered like ritualistic satanic abuse in all of her patients, which is just not true. <laughs> like it's just untrue. Um, but out of that kind of movement, we began acknowledging that some memories can be planted or suggested to patients who are vulnerable. And I think this is what happened to Teal Swan. So under, under the guidance of her therapist in the 90s, she started to quote unquote remember ritualistic satanic abuse. And so that's become her whole platform going forward as this new age self-help leader is that I've suffered the worst of the worst. I've gone through this thing. I can relate to whatever horrors you've experienced because I've been through it myself. Where it becomes sticky is that the people who come to her, she's doing the same thing. She is creating memories that are false in her followers, making them realize, quote unquote, that they've also suffered horrific abuse. So she's creating the problem and then posits herself as the only salvation from that problem. It's crazy. <laughs> With that theory, do you think that she believes that because those thoughts and those memories have been planted so um, they've, they've rooted themselves so deep? Yeah, I mean, I can't comment on what her like is happening in her heart. Um, I do believe that she probably suffered some kind of abuse. Like, I mean, it's sexual abuse is unfortunately super prevalent. Um, so I'm not saying that she isn't a victim and that she didn't suffer trauma and it doesn't really matter like what the trauma trigger is, but that you have PTSD after that, which is like, you know, functions similarly in a lot of people despite, despite their, you know, particular abuse situations. But there's these, I mean, you can be depressed without being traumatized, right? Like you can be suicidal without experiencing a trauma like that. But the the real danger is that she's making it worse for these people. She's like, well, there must be a reason why you feel this way. And the reason is that something happened to you that you don't remember when you were a child. And this is a process that she learned through this other, you said a psychotherapist? Mm -hmm. Barbara Snow. Barbara Snow. Periwinkle Snow. I think Perry, <laughs> yeah, Perry, Perry Wink, yeah, yeah. Isn't that a beautiful thought, Perry Winkle Snow? <laughs> oh. Yeah. So Barbara Snow is the perpetrator of all of this. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened with Barbara Snow. How did she get this, 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 uh, this? I don't know. Ruse up and running. I mean, maybe it's not was, a ruse. She was wildly discredited. I mean, I think she was. She did actually believe in the process of uncovering hidden memories in a patient. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 denounced by like mainstream psycho like psychology. But yeah, I mean, I think she still works with patients even today, which Ooh. is a scary thought. Wait, so what's denounced by? um just now. the just the like belief that you can work with a patient and uncover hidden trauma like that they don't remember really like repressed trauma mm -hmm. huh unless you're like a hypnotist or something like that or is that kind of along the same lines as what this uh periwinkle snow does or um i mean obviously obviously a hypnotist is trying to get real memories uh i think that's what barbara snow claims to do doesn't sound like she's always doing that though i mean hypnosis is a tool um that a lot of like mainstream psychologists use because it's a very powerful tool i believe that there there's danger in both approaches like just the concept that like you can carry the like bodily memory of trauma but you don't remember the event that happened it gets a little dangerous in those waters in those deep waters <laughs> oh 
Good one. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, this docuseries came out. Um, there's an amazing podcast um, called the gateway oh, <laughs> <laughs> called the gateway called the gateway. Yeah. Um, by this guy Jennings Brown. He's a, an investigative journalist uh, who kind of goes into a lot of um, uh, subcultures. What's up with these people's names? Jennings Brown? Did he change his name too? Because when you say Jen- Jennings Brown, there's no other occupation that I would imagine him to have. <laughs> other than a you know, journalist who infiltrates yeah. cults. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he, he's he's awesome. He did a really great job kind of spending time with Teal and asking hard questions about what exactly she was doing. Um, and I think he, I mean, he was instrumental in the docuseries too. And he wanted to wait for the right people to come along to cover Teal because it is delicate and you can't with a hundred percent certainty call it a cult because it doesn't necessarily fit that old mold of what a cult is. But there's something to be said about these, these movements that are taking off in social media, like how people become radical, radicalized, how people join these like spiritual groups and stuff. The, the reach is far wider. Yeah, I mean, there, maybe there's some kind of social media cult that, uh, you know, hasn't really been studied at this point, but maybe there's some aspect of social media that makes it easier to, I guess, kind of even inadvertently enter yourself into a cult. Um, I could see that. Um, and probably not a lot of research done on it at this point. But, uh, well, this is really interesting. I, I definitely want to check out this documentary called The Deep End on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll be checking that out in the next week or two. I'll- I'll be checking out her videos. I'll I'll check in with you guys after uh, four hours of watching some of her videos. Yes, seriously. Oh boy, <laughs> I, I might be a little glazed over. <laughs> Next week, Tim will be in his van, and Lance will be talking about his satanic ritual abuse. <laughs> I am. What's the what 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 is the term for somebody who knows everything about everyone's thoughts they've ever had in their their what was it called? The Akashic Record. Yeah, uh, that'll, I'll, that's you. I'll write the sequel to that. <laughs> Akashic, Akashic Reinsteerna. It's not a book. It's just a concept. Oh, okay. Well, I'll write a book about it. Sequel to omniscient <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, they could keep going and going and going. We'll call it what Teal a, Hair. The ultimate uh, by... franchise. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my new name, Teal Hair. <laughs> Only I'll, I'll spell my name H uh, A R E. Yeah. <laughs> Teal also does reaction videos on her website or on YouTube um, to the Ducky series, which is <laughs> oh, hilarious. That's interesting. <laughs> we'll definitely, we'll have to check that out. All right, everyone. Well, let, let us know what you think of The Deep End if you get a chance to check it out. And thanks a lot for listening to this episode of Crawl Space. On the public feed, we uh, will be resuming these crypt episodes behind the paywall, just strictly on Crawlspace Premium. So again, check it out at crawlspace.supportingcast.fm. Jen, thanks for joining us. Super interesting conversation about Teal. Yeah. And uh, keep looking into those UFOs, Tim. Those I'm sorry. I will. Those, yep. Those, UAPs. Uh, yeah. UAPs. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Good stuff. Good, good convo. I'm, I'm coming back down. I'm not as spicy as when we started uh, <laughs> earlier on. Crawl space, crawl space, crawl space.